Michael Church, Crawl Space Ninja. Today we're going to share with you the best times in an attic and a crawl space that you should remove insulation, when it's okay to leave it in place, and also when it's okay to possibly cover it up. So we hope this is good information for you. Stay tuned. If you're new to Crawl Space Ninja, we talk about everything related to crawl space encapsulation, insulation, air sealing, and even indoor air quality. We hope you'll subscribe to our channel, ring that notifications bell. Make sure you follow us on Facebook, check out our DIY store and our franchise opportunities. Many homeowners ask, when should crawl space insulation be removed? When should it be replaced? Why is it Crawl Space Ninja insulates the foundation walls and you know all that sort of stuff? So I thought I'd go through some of the factors that we run into or some of the issues we run into that causes us to want to remove that subfloor insulation. You do not always have to remove the subfloor insulation. It's not mandatory, but here are some reasons, first of all, in a crawl space that you would want to remove subfloor insulation. Reason number one is critters nesting in the insulation. I've been in many crawl spaces where there's mice and snakes and you know all kinds of stuff nesting up in the insulation. And what do you think those rodents and reptiles are doing to that insulation? They're peeing and pooping all over the top of it, even though you might not even know it's there. We've pulled a lot of insulation out of a crawl space and seen big stain marks on the paper. And of course, you know, all that is just horrible for the indoor air quality. And it can even, depending on where the nest is, they may even actually pee and poop so much that they create a humidity problem between the joists and create a mold problem. So if your uh, crawl space is overwhelmed by pests, if you got a lot of you know, squirrels nesting in there or things like that, that would be a good time to remove the insulation. And that also applies to the attic. If you've got a lot of nesting squirrels or anything going inside, you got a possum or a raccoon or anything like that that's bats, that's caused all kinds of excrement all over the insulation, removing that insulation before applying new insulation is always a good idea. The second reason I would remove insulation is obviously if you have a mold problem, inside the crawl space. A lot of contractors out there, if they see mold on the joists of the crawl space, they'll actually leave the insulation in place and perhaps apply some form of mold cleaner or disinfectant, uh, which only gets the insulation wet, which is not good for the insulation, and I'll cover that in a second. But also, it doesn't get on all of the wood in the subfloor, so the, the mold disinfectant or the mold cleaner is actually inhibited by the insulation being in place. So if we see visible signs of mold or if the wood moisture level is high and we were concerned that there could be a potential mold problem, we will also remove that insulation. And the same goes true in that attic. If you've had some kind of water leak or humidity problem and you see mold growing on the joists of the attic, there's a good possibility that mold could also be growing on that drywall ceiling or, or floor of the attic and between the ceiling of the, the floor above it. So you wanna make sure you get that insulation out to ensure that there's not mold growing on the drywall. Plus, when you go to address the mold on the rafters and the roof decking, that cleaner or that disinfectant is going to land on that insulation that's in place, which brings me to the third reason, and that is if the insulation gets wet. Okay, believe it or not, part of fiberglass and, and different types of insulation is to trap air, okay? So that's how it's able to insulate. It gets its R value from the trapping of air. So if you, if you apply some type of mold disinfectant, whether it's in the attic or the crawl space, you're actually putting water or some kind of moisture into that fiberglass and it loses its R value. That is the same as if it's humidity, high humidity in the crawl space or the attic, or if that insulation gets wet, it just kind of draws up and it loses its R value. So another indicator of why we would remove insulation uh, prior to re-insulating would be if the insulation is wet. Don't ever reuse insulation, okay? So a lot of contractors out there, they will take the insulation out of the subfloor, for example, in a crawl space. They'll lay it on that dirty, nasty plastic. They may address some kind of mold issue up in the the subfloor and then put it back, okay? So anytime you're dealing with insulation in a crawl space, I don't recommend you reuse the insulation. Now this uh, may or may not apply in the attic. I have actually done attic jobs where we have uh, the ability to remove the insulation. It was still in very good shape. In some cases, it was even blown in a few years before. 
So we remove it from the insulation, we, we store it, and then we air seal the attic floor and then blow that insulation back in. So if the insulation is in good shape in an attic, there's, it's really okay to reuse it. And you could technically reuse the insulation in the crawl space. The only problem is it's gonna get all nasty because typically the crawl space floor is dirty and you don't wanna put that dirty, nasty insulation back up in the crawl space. So use your best judgment if you're gonna reuse insulation, but if, if there's any moisture or any dirt or anything like that in that insulation, I wouldn't recommend reusing it. Okay, so back on the crawl spaces real quick. When you want to insulate the foundation wall versus the subfloor is if you're going to seal the crawl space, okay? So code requires a vented or open crawl space to have subfloor insulation. And if normally we encapsulate the crawl space and seal the vents, so we would do foundation wall insulation as a preference because it's less expensive to install. There's less square footage of it in most cases. And uh, wall insulation can get wet without having to uh, remove it and replace it versus say a fiberglass or a rock wool insulation as I mentioned before. So if you're going to seal the crawl space and control humidity and all that sort of thing, a, a, a foundation wall insulation is recommended in our area here in Tennessee. It's at least an R10 uh, foam board uh, that we use in some up north parts. It may be R20 or something like that. So check with local codes, but that would be when we would remove the insulation and then replace it with a foam board on the walls. Okay, lastly, let's talk about the attics real quick. If you've got a, a home that you're wanting to add more insulation to the attic, a lot of homes, the insulation will settle. It'll lose its R value because all that air has settled out. Gravity pulls the insulation down, forcing the air out. It is okay, as I mentioned before, as long as the insulation is in good shape, that you blow new insulation on top of the old insulation. My only caution would be don't let someone talk you into it air sealing the attic by blowing new insulation on top. Most insulations used in attics are not air sealers. You would have to remove the old insulation, air seal the, sub, or air seal the floor of the attic, and then blow that new insulation back in. And a lot of times that is a more effective and efficient way to insulate the attic versus blowing another six inches of uh, fiberglass or rock wool or whatever you're using on top of the uh, old insulation. So Michael Church, Crawl Space Ninja, we hope that answers some of those questions for you. We hope you make it a happy and blessed day. Hope you'll like this video down below and I'll see you later.